Okay. Presented to the Wireless Village CFP panel, Kentaro is the guy who builds funky Wi-Fi gadgets for fun. Kentaro is known as that guy in Tokyo who build crazy hacker gadgets. Creations include the hack chip, Kismet Mobile Dashboard, Wi-Fi Centipede. Somehow as the secondary presenter biography, we have Aardvark has a personal connection with his Wi-Fi adapters. He names every single one of them and refers to them as humans. Dark Matter has a very mobile capturing rig known as the Wi-Fi backache. Presentation title, War Drivers Anonymous. 100 minutes was the requested amount of time. We're just going to do this until the next presenter says get off the stage. And the description of the presentation for some of us, war driving is a way of life. It's what we do for fun and sometimes for work and do you even wiggle, bro? And there's, I think that's Japanese. I can't even read half of this, but we Dude, like who, these whoever guys. Whoever wrote that synopsis is a fucking <laughs> lyrical gangster, man. He seriously is that I couldn't translate most of it in Google's Translate, so I had to, <laughs> had to just take his word for it that this was going to be a good talk. So um, for those of you who don't know, uh, I am A. Rick, and this is A. Rick, and we run the Wireless Village. Most people call me Zero just so that we don't both have to look every time, and some of you, yeah, are jerks. Uh, there, there's uh, Kentaro. We'll start at the other end because he actually submitted this talk. El Kentaro has been making all kinds of fun toys for quite some time, and they're awesome. I actually don't know what Aardvark does. He, sees, he keeps showing up around Pineapple Boy, and uh, he just kind of follows him around. So I think, I think when, when Dark Matter is tired of carrying the cactus, Aardvark's there with a strong Man back. Manservant. Yeah. Manservant. <laughs> Yeah, that's Is that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course you all know Dark Matter who spent his day whoring around Black Hat, but not making any money despite attracting a huge amount of booth traffic to wherever he was standing. We taught him better though, so next year he's gonna charge and I am assuming Cisco two thousand to three thousand dollars like every fifteen minutes. Yeah, so I if think you're Cisco, interested, come Cisco hit me up, pay. I got you. So you're paying for your batteries. I will I will guarantee you <laughs> RO yeah. I will guarantee you ROI on your investment. Uh, so we're, we're mostly just here to, well, I mean, we were going to sit at this table anyway and just drink. So we thought some people might like to, I don't know, heckle or something. So welcome. We're going to talk a little bit very unstructured about things, depending on if anyone feels like moderating or not. I don't, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so I think Kentaro wanted to talk originally about war driving or something. So... Uh, Somebody, somebody get the mic all the way over there. There you go, sir. I'd bring it, but then he'd take another picture of me for serving him to send to his mama. I got a picture of a white guy serving me, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, no, Rick, I, no, no, not zero, but Rick, yeah, you know, ask me uh, to put a talk in, and I'm like, I ain't got time for this. Um, but uh, I'll do a panel. <laughs> I, I do a panel uh, with... Uh, with the two craziest people I know, and then Rick was gone more, so we have four of us. Um, yeah, like, war driving is a noob thing, right? And you're like, when you say, I go do war driving, it's like, oh, noob. I'm like, well, yeah, but some of us have been doing this for ages, and it's getting, you know, different. But, like, now suddenly with, like, IoT and everything, it's like, everything like, oh, detect your wireless thing. It's like, yeah, war driving, right? Like, well, however you market it, it's still war driving. So I figured it would be kind of fun to see some of the craziest war drivers I know on one board and... That's this thing, so. So you brought along Dark Matter because his cactus rig is just so All right, low so on the wind From now here. on, whoever, every time you see him, he's no longer Dark Matter. Dark Matter is such a, like, it's like such a, like, ooh, evil name. It's, fucking, it's, it's Pineapple Boy, all right? And if you don't know why that origin is, there's a video clip on YouTube. And um, I tweet it once in a while. Every time somebody says, hey, Stand Dark Matter. Hey, Dark Matter. Hey, Dark She's in this room. I'm not going to point her out. But. I will. I won't say this, but it's. Her initials are Nicole Beckwith. So, <laughs> so, no, because she saw Dark Matter walking with the Wi-Fi cactus around and said, I love when you refer him to as Pineapple Boy, which I thought was awesome. Yeah. And every time somebody is like, hey, Dark Matter, I'm like, no, no, Pineapple Boy. Yeah, so, why don't you explain why we call him Pineapple Boy? Because... Yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's his thing, right? Yeah. That's how he got hooked up with Hack 5. Exactly. 
Okay, real quick. Um, basically, this is the Wi-Fi Cactus. It's uh, 50, uh, 50 radios, and it's 25 Hack 5 Pineapple Tetras. Uh, and so... <laughs> it's very light. It's su- super light. Actually, it's non-ionizing. Yeah, no, that's what we tell all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be of great comfort with your prostate cancer. Yes. Uh, and so basically, it's, li- it's passively listening on 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, uh, 50 channels at the same time. So since... There's a lot of you, there's a lot of Wi-Fi, there's a lot of things. We've got to soak that all up because there's going to be a drought. We've got to save it, store it, so we can reuse it in the future. Uh, but it's been a really interesting project. It's been an iterative one. I've done a lot of upgrades for this year to remove a lot of bottlenecks from last year. And lights. And added lights. You've got to add more lights, right? It's all about the blinky blinky. Shout out to Mike and Weston for hooking it up on some of that action. But, uh, um yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just been a fun project. It's like, it started out literally as like a little war walking box that I brought with me to DEF CON uh, some odd years ago, and it just blew up into what it is now. So, like, get out there, build stuff, and just be involved in stuff, and yes! crazy yes! stuff will happen. Speaking of building stuff, I think the first question from the moderator is, how long are you going to coast on your fame? Uh, what's, what's next year's project look like? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I mentioned this is a hard-hitting panel. <laughs> Next, He's going to coast as long as he can. Next year, there's 256 colors instead of eight, or what are we looking at? <laughs> and we're going to, like, add maybe a few more strands. Oh, brighter. Brighter, that's and good. And maybe it might bounce to music. <laughs> Let's get back to the panel. Let's get on topic. This isn't an LED conference. <laughs> Wait, do you want the LEDs? You guys like the LEDs, right? Yeah, see? Yeah, LEDs! Would you rather see more that was, that was good. More tech! We want blinky lights on radios, Stark Matter. They want the LEDs, but they want them on radios. <laughs> so next Fair year, enough. I expect to see a string of ESPs with blinky lights. That would be amazing. You can do it. Yeah. You can do it. Well, one thing that's been awesome about this is there's been kind of some uh, spiral out projects. There's this one called the uh, Wi-Fi Satellite now, uh, which they took to Chaos Communication Congress, which was ESP, uh, I don't remember, but they were rad, and they had a bunch of OLED screens. Um, there was somebody I saw in the in Caesars that had a backpack on that had some crazy looking radio stuff on it. I don't know. I just think it's awesome. I think everybody should like build something, bring it with them because like this stuff. There's a lot of cool shit in the air, right? We should be capturing it. We should be understanding it. So, I, I have to agree. One of the things that we've seen over the years as we've been doing more and more fox hunting is custom rigs, mostly based on Raspberry Pis, with little screens to do fox hunting to chase things around, bigger batteries, better antennas, and things like that. And I mean, I think that you know, really moving to wearable computing is where it's at. So I wanna, I wanna see more of this kind of stuff. yeah, wearable computing like his Dioth necklace. Only three people have been arrested in the casino so far for Dioth-ing the slot machines. Kentaro is gonna make four in about an hour when this talk's done. <laughs> Somebody got arrested. Every time somebody got arrested, somebody runs up to me. He's like, "Was it you? Was it you?" I'm like, "No, it's not me this time." <laughs> so the the real key to this is this isn't anything new, but it's something that if you're getting into wireless RF in general, if you can't find an access point, you don't know how to do wireless properly. You need to have that capability. If you're doing this professionally, rogue access point hunting i.e. we're walking, we're driving, is the core of what you need to learn how to do. Get a bad guy in your network, or if you're the bad guy in your network, you want to not be caught, but you need to know how to catch before you can know how to not be caught. So what we're going to try and talk about, I think, when we finally get to it after being complete (laughs) and utter assholes, is to a point where we can actually help you guys to learn a little bit of how to do this, but some of the tech that's involved in this. We keep going back to that. This is an amazing view of a rerun of what we did 17 years ago that started the wireless village. We had a stack of Linksys boxes about this high, and it was 2007, so it was 11 years ago. 2007, we pulled a terabyte of data out of DEF CON. So anybody that was alive in 2007, do you know how much a terabyte of data cost? (laughs) Thank God we were sponsored that year. It was ridiculous. It was like 17 hard drives worth of data that we pulled out. But that was then. We've gotten to this now. And as Rick was saying, we've also got people running around with Raspberry Pis. Being slightly covert is important because if you're tracking something, you don't want them to see you coming. So if Dark Matter can do this, imagine what he's got in his pocket. Not in his pants, but in his pocket. Because we don't really care what's in his pants right now. <laughs> um, can I add on to that? Device? A Bluetooth device, wearable? Yeah, at, 
There's a, uh, there's another piece of that uh, following up with that is like 17 years ago it was basically access points, yeah. access points and laptops. That's all you saw out there. Now you got smart grids, you got dash cams, you got cars, you got all sorts of shit. Um, I noticed uh, somebody's bought Nexar dash cams and they're using hundreds of them near my hotel. Um, there's buses. <laughs> just noticed the uh, NHP has got. Wireless access points with the car number as the SSID. There's just all sorts of crazy stuff out there. And that's why I got back into it after I got out, is because there's just so much cool stuff out there. So much weird stuff that's connecting, weird clients. I've got like probably 40 wireless devices connected all the time in my house, and I'm not even trying. And so there's just so much weird stuff out there that's not just Belkin and Linksys now. It's also, I think, like the tools have changed significantly. Like over, like it used to be like only like the air air crack stuff, and then the, the rest you had to like build it, or you had to buy go full commercial. But now you know there's so much more. There's you know there's there are different scripts. There's you know the new Kismet is awesome. Go support them on Patreon. Yeah, but seriously, I mean, you know, you used to have like multiple tools for different things. Now it's getting into a framework level. So it's truly like you know there's more shit to see. We got better tools, you know, computers are cheaper, you know, so with decent power. So I think we're in an actual renaissance for war driving. So I don't care if you think it's a noob thing. I think it's actually a cool thing to do. And we're also seeing actual, like, the, there was that uh, rogue AP in Atlanta City Hall or something a couple of months back. So, yes, yes. right? So we, we're starting to see, like, wireless attack in Dark Hotel, you know, wireless attacks used in a non, like, fun and games hack kind of way, right? It's becoming a serious problem. Who in the room remembers NetStumbler? Who in the, okay, keep your hands up. Who in the room had an iPack with a prox card and a backpack on it? I didn't. Who still has it? Pulled it out yesterday, and you know what? It fucking still works. Old is new again, guys. You know, we were walking around with little handhelds back then. Now we're walking around with Raspberry Pis that are quad core with a gig of RAM. We've got so many more capabilities now, but it all started with the exact same way that we used to do stuff. Go around, walk around, drive around, and get as much data as you can, and look at it and find the holes. How do you think WPA was cracked? How do you think WEP was cracked? People got enough data and started messing with it. Guess what? WPA3 is going to hit the stores really, really soon. There's our next venture. If, if you're talking without a mic, could you talk a little quieter? I can turn this thing up higher. I really can. No one wants to hear that. These ones, go to 11. <laughs> These ones do go to 11, and then they start to feed back, and then it feels like we're at balance talk again. Ooh, siren jack or feedback, one of those two. The goons will know soon, and all the cats. Go. So, Kintaro, start with... Yeah, tell us, about, tell us about how you pick gear. I know you're a lot closer to China, so you just buy everything from there and it ships you faster. Yeah, I, I call it the Wi-Fi Express. They kind of ship. <laughs> um, I want my rigs to look like they're out of a movie. I, I, as much as, like, Advark, you know, he names his dongles and he has them all sticking to the laptop. Um, you know, I understand. I used, to have a, I used to think, like, adapters on the back of my laptops were cool until I had like seven of them and my screen starts to kind of tilt backwards and it's getting ridiculous. And then I started laying them out. I had our cables everywhere. So um, I started to put them in cases, but then I started to, I like movies. I like, I like. Jesus. I said shut up for a reason. <laughs> I did on the mic and I'm going to do that again if you all keep making noise. <laughs> oh, good morning. Hey, Hi. good morning. Hi, everybody. <laughs> this one has a wire. Hack me now, bitches. But uh, so I, I want to. I want to be Q in the 007 series, you know, where or or Warlock in Die Hard 4. I don't care how much you think it's a shitty movie. I think it's a great hacker movie. So is Swordfish. Swordfish fucking rules. <laughs> Um, but no, I wanted to be the guy where the hero comes for gadgets. So I started building my rigs in a way that they kind of look like they're out of a movie. They still function. So uh, I spent 12 years working in an ad agency designing stuff for my clients. So looks is really important for me. Um, you know, stunning look good, hence so. But um, so when I build my rigs, I don't want to. And I travel. I travel a lot. So they have to be. They have to be TSA agent friendly. 
<laughs> I'm trying to find the right word for it. Like, if, if it happened with like a bunch of antennas, like the first, I tell you, the first one I built had this massive anchor battery. It had, it had two Raspberry Pis without a case on it and three Alpha cards where I popped the case off. And I had these little SMA piglets running it. On a fucking x ray, it looks like a fucking bomb because it's a massive lead thing and wires coming through. And the TSA is like, what's that? And it's like, oh, it's my mobile Wi Fi spot. And I'm like, what? It's like, I have shitty Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so ever since then, I've, I've gone through this process of how can I make it more... Like, traveling... Like, Advark has a whole car decked out for driving, which is fine. But if you travel like me, where you go from hotel to hotel to country to country, you know, there's, every country has a different state. And some countries, they really don't want you to war drive. So I have to be able to take everything apart and put it in separate bags and reassemble it once I land so I can do it. Or smaller ones, right? So like the Raspberry Pi smaller ones that I built, those are the ones that I can throw in my bag in my pocket. And you know, TSA doesn't know what the fucking war driving Raspberry Pi looks like. Think. Or you bedazzle them. Yeah, or bedazzle them. Like <laughs> somebody came up to me, is it, is it asking me if it was real stone, the real like diamonds. I'm like, you know, this is fucking DEF CON, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna wear fucking diamonds on my neck. <laughs> but uh, no, but so I have different challenges than you know. I, I can't. I mean, he travels internationally, but I'm not traveling to hostile network environment countries with that. Um, so yeah, yeah you turn the, off the lights and dark matter is completely incognito. <laughs> well, and, and, and on that note, uh, I did actually take it to China, not like fake China, Hong Kong, real China, Beijing. So, Wait, what? <laughs> wow. wow, let's call out China. But, but before that, he's like, "Hey, Kentaro, have you ever traveled with your rifle to Beijing? Do you know anything? Do you think I'm going to get arrested?" It's like I don't know. <laughs> uh, if you do, that's going to suck. But hey, you know. <laughs> We help each other a lot. So the secret I found for traveling with gear is try to break it down into as many small packages as possible. Um, And since most of this, like, I would say 80% of it is retail stuff that you can buy off the shelf. You know, it's not so scary if it's something that's in a case and it looks professional. It's like when you have the wires hanging out and the wires are all, like, connected to weird things and then they can see the board. I mean, because on the x-ray, they're seeing through stuff, right? They're seeing the boards. They're seeing everything. But, like, when they open the bag, because they're going to get you for a secondary check, that's the point when you got to put on your A game. So, What's in the box? <laughs> well, it certainly isn't a bomb. And, and, and according to uh, what I told Chinese Customs, is this is telecom Wi Fi equipment. So. <laughs> and they believe that. Yeah, I was going to say. I was, well, I was, I was, also, if you do international travel and you break it up, TSA is really going to get on you if you don't have an answer for the questions they have. Like, I, I, I traveled with my hack chip, and I knew they want to question it because that thing has, like, wires, and there's a prox mark on the back, and it looks like a bomb detonator. Um, but I had the other one, uh, the retro gaming platform version uh, plugged in, and the hack chip version I had from where I had it in my backpack. So the guy is like, hey, what's that? And I was like, oh, it's a gaming platform. It's a, did you make it? I'm like, yeah, it's like, a, it's like a cool retro gaming thing. And I turned it on. It's like, he goes, what are the antennas for? It's like, oh, they have these little cars that have. So if you do a simulation of what kind of questions you expect, and if you don't, ha- if you don't have, there's no lag between their question and your answer, they don't care. I mean, if the, you, you see this at the airport all the time. Like, if people get stopped and they ask and they go like, oh, then they're like, yeah, secondary. But if you have an answer for, if you do a simulation, you have the answer. And like I said, it's have shitty Wi-Fi. They're like, all right, whatever. And now a lot of this equipment, I mean, it's it's small, it's nice, it's condensed, it looks really clean. And so, I mean, there's not a problem really traveling with it. I mean, if you have a ton of it, it can kind of be sketchy. But I mean, I haven't had any problems really traveling with my equipment. So. Yeah, so on that front, you know, it's, it, we're, we're in a golden age of equipment, I would say. Yeah, I, and I work in mobile forensics, so I sometimes travel with, like, dozens of phones. Um, okay, and by dozens, I mean 140. Um, so, as they were saying, little packets, because I, I, I have to kind of take them in a Pelican case, so it's a big brick of electronics. So, I know, so what I do is I, I've been really good, I've, I've become really good at engaging the TSA agent. 
And I, I tell them what I'm doing. Oh, well, I take these so I can do chip off forensic, blah, 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 and deleted data. And then the TSA agent gets really interested about that. And, and so I'm, I'm, I become really good at diverting them from that because I'm not doing anything illegal, but they kind of freak out about 120, 40 phones. 120, man, I've had too much, I've had too much alcohol. Anyway, um, so I, I engage them on that. And I, you know, I have a big bag of dongles, Mike and Steven and Rhonda and Little Joe. And He's not all kidding. They're all labeled up here. No, they are. Um, we'll talk about that later. Kolchak and Bridget. It's even frightening. Each one That's is special to me. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's uh, the, the point is I'm not... Wait, what was the point? Yeah. <laughs> Where so I travel with a lot of stuff. I mean, my last trip, I traveled with three laptops, two, la two tablets, 67 phones, a bunch of antennas and dongles and things. And I'm going to get stopped. I just, I just talked to him about, yeah, you know what I do? I, I do wireless security. I help, I help agencies work out, blah, 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 mobile forensics, blah, blah, blah. Oh, really? That's cool. Hey, what kind of phone do you have? Oh, I have a, oh, I have a Galaxy S6. Oh, cool. Do you ever sell phones on eBay? You know? Oh, yeah, we do a class that teaches you how to delete, you know, get deleted data off those. Really? Deleted data? And from the look on her face, it's like, I just sold my phone on eBay, right? <laughs> you know that look, right? <laughs> Um, so you're going to take stuff with you, but I, I kind of echo what they say is, you know, keep things organized and in little packs so that they don't freak out about it because they're going to see everything anyway. Whether you check it or you take it with you, they're going to check it, period. Yeah, I mean, I, I do a lot of wireless pen testing, and I do it across country, um, international at occasions, but everything I use, and everybody laughs at me, I use these little Eagle Creek bags that zip up, and every single bag has very, something very specific in it. Having those stories pre-planned for TSA is amazing, but once you start talking about what you're doing, they're people too, believe it or not. As they're groping you, just remember they're people, and they actually want to hear shit that you have to talk about. They care about that. So it's cool if you have that stuff kind of organized and neat, um, and then when you get to where you're going, put it all together and, you know, hack the planet. But that being said, the other thing that you can do, and this is, you know, funny haha -ha gimmicks, it works amazing at DEF CON, especially at about 12 o'clock at night when people are, you know, half lit. Walk up to somebody with an antenna and a radio and go, you have an iPhone, don't you? They're like, oh my God, how'd you know? Uh, you know, you're good. Uh, nope, not anymore. You should probably reflash that. Sadly, at DEF CON parties in the past, I've actually had people come back to me, I reflashed my phone, is it okay now? It's like, wow, okay. But the key to this one is, if, if you need to get upward buy-in to things that you're doing somehow. Somehow having some good tricks up your sleeve work really well. DEF CON's amazing for testing out those tricks. You know, who knew that walking around with a backpack or building something that you put online, you know, Wired Magazine, I think, wrote you up, right? One, uh, of, them, one of them did. Somebody did. And I don't know who. That's huge and cool, but it also gives you guys the power to go back and say, hey, you know what? Your wireless sucks here, and here's how I want to help you fix it. And they're going to start to listen. So I'm not, I hate FUD, fear and unnecessary doubt. But sometimes it's helpful if you need to get your point across if somebody's already paved the way for you and you can use that. So, so I work with a lot of uh, some lawyers back in Japan because they have no idea what hacking is. And the easiest way to convince a lawyer well, how frightening this can be is to uh, scan for the Wi-Fi. Or like do a, um, a man attack and then see the list come up and say like, oh, you were in Chicago last month, weren't you? Or like so-and-so, like, how did you know? I'm like, well, your Wi-Fi is there. And they're like, oh, now we finally see it, right? So it's, it's a simple tool to, to get your message across. And... Um, so, the, yeah, I mean, it's a good educational tool. I mean, it's the, it's the, I think it's far, way easier to convince something is wrong with what, it, what they have by using Wi-Fi than, like, reverse engineering a binary in front of them, you know? Yeah, I'm going to call back just a little bit something Rick said a second ago, which was DEF CON is a great place to test your stuff. I'd like to exclude the casino floor and yeah. MZ yeah. catchers. Yeah. Uh, this is not a great place to test your, to test your MZ catchers, Don't seriously. And, and also... According to uh, Luxor security, it's not good to do it in the hotel area either. Yeah. I may or may not have had that contact. Yeah. Um, I'd like to kind of direct us back to, I don't know, not TSA. My balls have been fondled too many times, and it's just not fun anymore. So it's true. Um, yeah, hey. six times every time I go through, it's weird. Like, it's not big, it's not small, it's average, just I think. Just like your smile. Uh, yeah, well, always. Oh. 
I paid for the service, may as well enjoy it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we've got all these fun things to collect and really this is a golden age. Um, Kismet's new release uh, beta just came out which we're running over here on the wall and Alex is running in the back on a 32 box monster. Then the pineapple's running it. So Kismet, again, they said it quietly. I'm gonna say it for the third time. They have a Patreon account. Yeah. They do, I have the cards up here for the Patreon. We make Excellent. nothing off of that, but uh, Dragorn. Yeah, the more we pay him, the more he cares yeah. about the project. I'm just saying, uh, it's good. And not only does Kismet support Wi-Fi, Kismet's now starting to support Bluetooth and broken bottles. What's going on over there? Jesus. Excellent. Excellent. Make it rain. Seriously. Kismet Patreon. Seriously, yes. Rick, Rick. Seriously. Dragorn is kicking ass on this yeah. release. Yes, yeah. he is. Good. Yeah, just as a side note. Yeah, I talk to Dragorn all the time. And it, it, quite often I have something that I want. And, you know, one particular day I was like, hey, you know what would be cool? If you could just show the number of clients that each access point has. And he's like, oh, that'll be probably kind of hard. And then he's like, oh, hold on just a sec. Ten minutes later. Oh, wait, that's going to be easy. Hold on. Yeah. Twenty minutes later, he had, a, he had a commit. And he's like, go ahead and do a git pull. It's done, right? It turned out it was eight lines of code, right? So now I can see how many clients. <laughs> and then ten yeah, minutes so later, it crashed. Yeah. Well, <laughs> It didn't that time. But, <laughs> but the point is, the point is, the guy does it not because he makes money. He does it because he, he loves doing it, and he, he's very responsive. So but if he had money, he wouldn't need to have another job. Right, so if, if only you can support him on Patreon, he can actually do this more. A couple bucks a yeah. Because I had one time, I was like, hey, Dragon, uh, it would be kind of cool if there was an API that I can hook in some more offensive tools. Fucking like, I was like, oh, that's gonna take a while. A week later, it's like, yeah, I decided to rewrite the whole framework so that you can actually plug in Python APIs. I'm like, oh. I did it on my lunch hour. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I didn't mean it to be like a complete rewrite of the source code base for like, it was just an idea, right? So seriously, I, you know, uh, I, I, and then if you think that Kismet, the old Kismet, like the 2.4 Kismet, it's not even more. It supports a shitload of different protocols, Bluetooth LE, Zigbee, Zigbee. Uh, yeah. RTL 433. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and for those that have been doing this at, for any length of time, if you do remember, Kismet used to come up and beep and squirrel and squack, and you had to do all kinds of shit to make it work. It doesn't do that anymore, so feel free to just load it and start going with it. I mean, you can be covert as well as being loud as hell if you want to be, um, <laughs> and and it's, it, does, it does an amazing job. It really, really, really does. You got to turn it and on. And there is a Discord group for Kismet. Um, just, and you can gr jump on there and ask questions about things. That there's a load of people using it. Um, don't get on and say, okay, probably four months ago, somebody got on and said, dude, your database is shit. It's shit. You're keeping track of shit stuff. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with me. Help me get this working. Uh... Yeah, go away, please. Get on. You can ask for help. Even if you're brand new at this, people will help you out. Um, yeah, so it's a great, it's a great group. It's on Discord. You can, you can get with me. I'll hook you up on it. But uh, yeah, if you if you sub, uh, participate in Patreon, then it's one of the perks on Patreon as well. Yeah. So again, Kismet, good. Um, really, why we do this is because we just. We know that there's shit flying through the air that we cannot perceive with our eyes, and we want to know what it is. I've got a radio that is connected to my radio phone with another radio, Bluetooth, just because, like, that's the kind of losers we all are. So building something like this and then putting Zigbee radios on it and Bluetooth radios on it, and I don't know, we could probably, like, you, you are the uh, um, mesh device onto it too and just start sniffing all the things because I don't know just communication passing right through my head and I can't hear it I want to hear it right so we set all these things up not just because we're curious but because we're nosy isn't that what most hams are right like you just sit there with your scanner and just nosy anybody else remember the 90s where you so, just listen so to everybody's zero. cordless phones Zero, yeah. zero. You remember, like, uh, Jason Scott a couple months said, said I found a, like, a camera in my Airbnb and it was like that. And then I said, like, okay, let me go around. I walked around my neighborhood and I found like 12 different networked cameras online. And I'm like, there's no way there's like 12 next cams just here, uh, you know, in, in residential areas. It's, these are Airbnbs that are rigged, right? So. So, so we all talk about, you know, war driving and it's cool and everything else. There's so many practical uses of this. Just as a real quick poll, how many people are staying in a hotel this week? How many people are staying at not their house? Okay. 
How many of you swept your rooms? Right. So the, the rest of you have the cameras running in your rooms. If you get good at war driving and you get good at multiple protocols in RF, you can find wireless transmitters, you can find RF transmitters, you can find ham transmitters. Guess what? Low-hanging fruit is easy shit to find. All you need to do is look, and most of the time you're going to find stuff. What I find is when I find stuff, that's when my ass comes out a lot, because, you know, they want to see my ass. Um, so I was going to say, Rick, the reason why it's low-hanging fruit is because it's also low entry on the adversary side, right? Absolutely, right? absolutely. So if it's low entry for them, it's low entry for us to find. So we're on this low-level fighting plane, right? I mean, last night, I mean, we were on the capture the flag, and there was a team, which will not be mentioned, that decided they were going to be cool, and they were going to leave something in the room overnight. Four and a half minutes, we looked around, we found it, we happened to maybe pull the SD card out while it was running. Hope that didn't mess it up too bad. Um, but learn to plant things. When you learn to plant things, you learn how to find things, and you can be safer. Do you really want your pictures on the internet of you in your hotel room? Everybody take that 30 seconds to think of anything you've ever done in a hotel room. Because I've used a black light in a hotel room, and you guys are some sick fucks. <laughs> also, also one, one more thing that I hear a lot is that a lot of people come to me because I build this stuff to... Yeah, 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 that guy, that guy, yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, did, hey, did you print that case? Did you print that case, or is that a... He's fox hunting the stage. He's right. checking to see if any of you are the fox. Uh, okay, so same fact. <laughs> So yeah, everybody like uh, comes up to me and says, "Hey, I think I'm gonna do this," or like they're like, you know, uh, I'm gonna build a backpack with uh, four Raspberry Pis and I don't know, 50 dongles, and I'm like, that's not gonna work because the heat is gonna kill you and the Raspberry Pis, and the battery's gonna be dead in seconds. I have melted plastic cases on yeah, our Pis. But a no, the times. point, the point, the point I was, I was, I was trying to make is that. I I will help you out if you come and say, "Hey, I have this idea. Do you think it's gonna work?" But I'd rather that you try it out and come to me and say, look, I have this issue, because that helps me. And, then, and this is the thing that comes up on the Discord or any other on online channel. People are critics and, and like thinkers before they actually do something about it, right? So if you go out and try it and you like it, good. You go out and try it and you don't like it, better. If you go out and try it you have a problem and you come to me, I will help you try to solve that problem. But don't be there like, don't be there going like, well, like I had a guy that said, I built one of the cases and he goes, oh, your case is unpractical because it only has three dongles. It should have more. I'm like, well, why don't you go Solved. build it? I'm like, go build it. Although, although I heard there's a French company that sells a million dollar backpack for a wireless man in the middle attack. We're if, the if there's career. anybody from that company, I will work for you. <laughs> So that was a uh, backpack. I, was, I, I think I'm going to file a cease and desist against them, but um, it's 250000 for the backpack. Uh, but the car, they have a like, full wireless oh God, hack you so car that's million a million. Dollar million. Car. Yeah. I guess they have like seven zero days too. And there's like seven. We have seven zero days. Seven. Well, they got seven. So yeah, oh, they got an eighth one? Oh, <laughs> good for them. Yeah, I want to reiterate what Kentaro said. We're kind of having a lot of fun with Pineapple Boy because his brilliant idea was to take 25 pineapples and notice that the top is flat so you could stack them up. Well, it's and then not he put perfectly them on, flat, though. And then he put them on a backpack. But honest to God, this thing is cool, and nobody else did it. Like, I wrote a tool that pings a Bluetooth MAC address and tells you the signal strength so that you can track the guy. It's not like rocket science here it's just that we did something and we tried <laughs> and it happened to look really cool when we were done i didn't add any lights to mine but I, yeah, there's still time you can always improve things that's yeah. the thing so it's an try. iterative process too you can learn from your failures of lack of lights and add no. right right or car batteries being much heavier than oh lipo. <laughs> yeah 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 lipos are incredible if you got the money <laughs> always go lipo if you saw him last or year he was on. sweating oh, yeah, and angry, and this year he's smiling the whole time, so the thing's like 15 pounds lighter. <laughs> and a huge shout out to at Glitch Tech, uh, that kid, he's, he's going to be in the vendor area around the Hack 5 booth, he's like a mad scientist, uh, he's got a YouTube channel, I think he's like 20 some odd years old, but he made the batteries for me for this year, and they're incredible, I got three and a half hours of battery life out of it um, last night, and 
I, he says I can even run him lower than I did. So go check him out. He's got a Patreon too, YouTube. Um, he makes some really neat stuff, like his drone that does de-authing. Uh, he made a cannon the other day, and it like drives and like shoots. So if you want some fun YouTube time, go check out Glitch Tech. Yeah. So, so I think I, there, I think the other thing that this is like the Wi-Fi, especially I think more Wi-Fi than anything else. It's really a. It's like a. It's like a. Uh, a uh, group effort, right? Oh, yeah. So everybody, hey! Hi, Jason! Hi, Jason! Free hugs in the back. Anybody want a hug? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I was thinking, like, glitch did your batteries, you know, uh, Zero's uh, uh, tool, uh, I do some other stuff. I think Wi Fi is a unique environment where there's a lot of collaboration on different aspects that are targeting a single technology uh, specification kind of thing, right? Yeah, it's it is a very very small community. Even though you guys are all here and we you know we have room for 500 people, we used to have room for 30 people and we thought it was a small community. Now we have room for 500 and we think it's a small community. Next year it might be 4,000 and we're going to think it's a small community because everybody ends up knowing each other one way or another. When we go out and send foxes out, we're doing that so you guys can learn how to do this shit. We're setting out you know setting up this kind of stuff so you guys can play with this. All of these war driving techniques. Russ said no pictures. Welcome to DEF CON. So use this stuff that we're giving you guys to train and practice and try your stuff. Build a new tool, come to DEF CON and try it. This is a phenomenal place to try this kind of stuff. Not an MZ catcher. Do not use an MZ catcher at DEF CON. Wait, what? Yeah, I'm going to follow up on that. Um, a lot of people feel, you know, about imposter syndrome, where I don't know anything. Um, like, El Quintaro, he builds shit, right? He builds a lot of stuff. He builds a... I don't know. It's useless. But anyway. No, it's and got I, blinking lights. Me, I care about different things. I, care about, I don't care about what the packets are doing. I just care that they're there. So there's different areas of expertise in all this. And building teams and asking questions. Like me and Dark Matter, he'll ask me a question. I'm like, dude, that's fucking simple. What the hell's wrong with you? And then he'll ask... And then I'll ask him a question. He's like, dude, that's fucking simple. What's wrong with you? Because cause we, we know different things. So don't feel like an idiot because you don't know something. You maybe know how to analyze. You maybe know how to program. You know, how to, you know about dongles and giving them proper human names. <laughs> but, or, or you know how to 3D print. Who taught you how to 3D print? Glitch did. Glitch did. <laughs> Go check out Glitch. Seriously, Glitch check. Go ahead. Seriously, like I, I don't care about the, 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 the completeness of my packet. I just, I, I want to hit that number, how many numbers I can hit with one device. So it's more of like fishing for me. Like not like, not like fishing, like P fishing, like old school F fishing. Um, <laughs> what he's saying is he wants to throw the sniffer out there and drink beer and wait until nothing comes back. That's if you suck at it, but. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, 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 hey. So support. Oh, yeah, shit, yeah, yeah. No, but like, so, so Dragorn, Dragorn and, and Mike will be like, uh, I was like, hey, Kentaro, can you fire up your big rig and see what it is? And I, I give him back the data. And it's like, man, you got shitty, janky packets. And I said, well, it's not, that's not the goal I'm trying to reach. I'm trying to see how much can I put in one case or how small can I build it or how many ridiculous antennas I could put on one thing. And I do a lot of materials. Like if you do one trick, if you do gonna build pelican cases, use ABS and keep the drill uh, burrs because you can remelt them and hide your crimes and shit like that. So, um, so I help. I'll help these guys out on the manufacturing side. They help me out on the software side. Um, you know, and then I, I also, you know, 12 years in ad agencies, I have some design eye, so that's, and then artwork will come up like, hey, Kentaro, I got this. I'm like, well, that's really cool, but maybe you want to move that D off everything around you button a little bit more to the right so you don't accidentally click to close, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's a whole bunch of different people doing different things, and it's really cool the way that everybody can contribute on a different level, right? When we build out the CTF, and I typically build out the boxes, Rick does all the testing on the antennas. If you look at our blog, he's got phenomenal antenna testing. So if you care about fidelity and you care about things that actually work and you care about drivers that work, use Pen2, not Cali. But that being said, once you get everything working, the fidelity of it for some of us is super important. I want to know not how many things are there, but I want to know what exactly is in every packet I get. So the radios I use versus the radios Aardvark uses versus Dark Matter using the Kismet drones are going to be completely different. 
So make sure you're getting the right tool for the right job. My father-in-law is a contractor, and he can build a house with you know a hammer and a nail. I get a hammer, I have a broken thumb, two holes in my finger, and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But you give me a radio, and I have really, really good capabilities with it. But you need to know what your tools do. One of the biggest things we tell people before they come out here is test your shit before you get out here. If you didn't test your shit before you got out here, use Friday to test your shit. Because if you don't know how far something is away, how close it is, where you need to be to de-auth, you don't know what you're doing in terms of getting that data. Everything about RF is black magic, no matter what physics tells you. Your stuff reacts differently than my stuff does, even though we've got the same chip, the same USB, and the same laptop. The oscillators are all different. They're all chinesium. I mean, if you don't know what chinesium is, you know, it's, it's that stuff that they tell you that comes into Amazon at 17 dB on an alpha, on an alpha that's, you know, <laughs> 320 milliwatts, yeah, because they put a really big antenna on it. Well, test that stuff, because it doesn't work the way that you think it does. Very good. Yeah, no, nothing works the way you think it does until you test it. Uh, how many of you tested all of your equipment at home before, say, coming to the capture the flag? And then how many of you updated right after that? <laughs> yeah, I did. That's why the capture the flag broke. Um, yeah, as it turns out, testing really, really matters. I mean, we've talked about what to tell the TSA and, you know, which tools we each like to name. And that, that's not me. <laughs> that's a sandwich. Who's got a sandwich? Oh, Who's eating? Who's eating? Yeah, somebody We're just high. got. Why is we got that alcohol not up and here? no food? Jeez, I want that. Oh, pretzels. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. Uh, so, <laughs> testing your equipment is really important, and depending on what you have, testing can be very difficult. So the the blog post that I most recently put up was we were trying really hard to upgrade our cap capabilities to do 802.11 AC stuff, and well, while I love Linux. Um, being new is not the best on Linux, so things AC that came out, you know, new. just a few years ago still don't have great support in Linux, so I've been testing things really a lot, and some things are annoying, kind of like you pull out the <laughs> dongle while it's running and the whole kernel crashes, so don't do that, ever. Uh, yeah, just don't ever disconnect them, just turn off the computer first or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I bought like every 8.11 AC adapter on Amazon because I was bored. Uh, I had spare time, and then I connected them all to a box. Um, you can talk to Alex about how only 32 of them work. Thanks, Intel. Uh, yeah. So if you have an Intel USB 3, you can connect a max of about 32 devices. 32. Uh, 96 USB endpoints, of which the Wi-Fi cards have approximately three. So, yeah, these are little things that you don't figure out until you start testing things. Uh, you want to build an all-channel Wi-Fi sniffer, you're going to need like six NUCs to do it, right? And that's completely ridiculous, but that is reality, unfortunately. And you don't know that until you test it and plug it all in. Now, one year we built the whole CTF on an Apple uh, server, and it turns out it's got two USB ports, and it supports... Uh, yeah, one bus, and it supports a max of four devices. So if you plugged five devices in, not only would it not work, it would crash. Uh, testing is really, 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 really important. And so yeah. I'm going to share you, just uh, a right. little... Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, testing is really important, but also understanding what it is that you're trying to do is really yes. even more important. And you'd be surprised how many DMs I get saying, I bought the Wi-Fi pineapple and I can't hack my girlfriend's Facebook. <laughs> and I'm like... I'm like... Thanks. that. Or like I build one of your cases, and but I have to authenticate to every Wi-Fi access point to hack the packets. I'm like, yeah, it's still kind of the point, you know. It's like, I mean, you have to have to like, like a basic understanding of what it is that you're trying to get to, right? And remember, a lot of us started before YouTube. We actually had to read the IEEE spec on how things are supposed to work. The easy button that is now called YouTube didn't always exist. And honestly, don't always trust what you see on the internet. I know, shocking. The internet what? talks about my shit works. I don't know why your shit doesn't work. Well, if you don't test your stuff, you don't know that your shit doesn't work. And that's really a key to this. We all want to hack the planet. But if you can't hack the planet because your shit doesn't work, because you didn't test it, don't even start because you're going to get caught really, really fast. Yeah, and expanding on what Kentaro said and Rick, um, know what you're looking for. Um, you know, my purposes are different. You know, with the Wi-Fi cactus, um, Dark Matter wanted to catch all of the things. So he's got a, a radio parked on every channel so he can catch all. everything that happens. I just Pokemon. care, me, I just care about, what's that? You are a wireless Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's Ash, catch, catch him. 
Um, I just care about the presence of a particular device. I want to track and monitor the position and geolocation, all that things. So really think about what you want to do with it. And so maybe injection may not matter to you, but yeah, monitor mode may matter. It doesn't matter. Holy shit. Yeah, I've had a lot of this whiskey. Um, you can talk. <laughs> you want to talk together? <laughs> the mic is mine. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to segue a second here, uh, kind of on this discussion of like geolocation and trying to find that some stuff, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, some of the tools. How many of you guys have heard of Wiggle before? Anyone? Wiggle? Wiggle? Wiggle. Have, have, have you met Andy? <laughs> Will you all stand up, Bob? Andy? <laughs> Anyways, these are these they are the guys wiggle. behind Wiggle. Hi, wiggle. So these guys created. It. Yeah, can we go applause for them? They, in my opinion, they they've done like an amazing service for this community, <laughs> like being able to provide um, visibility into wireless networks. How many times have you taken a MAC address, or excuse me, an SSID, and then tried to go search that someplace to try to see whose house that MAC address or that SSID came from? Anybody? I definitely have done that. Who, it's, who's ever done East Coast to West Coast or West Coast to East Coast reconnaissance before you left your house? How many want to do that? Wiggle is amazing for that. Okay, here's the secret. All right, I'm going to give you like the super basic secret right now. Go on eBay, get a Samsung S5. They're like 45 50 bucks. Or a Note 3, well, rather. There were, there were now, but now they're going to be like... Yeah, I know, no. Now no, they're because, 150 like bazillion dollars. <laughs> I'm going to make so much money. Uh, and then install Wiggle on it and put it in your pocket and take it everywhere you go. And you'll be, or you'll, you'll or leave it join, in a cab. You'll then join the multi-phone club with us. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So check this out. So we're... La what was it? Last DEF CON. We're driving in an Uber, and I'm like, hey... No, I wasn't driving. I was riding in an Uber, rather. Thank you. Making a little extra money. He's riding in this Uber. <laughs> and the, he, has the, he has his phone on the dash, right? And it's right there, and I see it. He's got directions on it. I'm like, hey, do you guys, by chance, want to just start participating in, like, wireless network war driving with us? And he's like, I don't know what that is. Here's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> So I downloaded Wiggle on his phone, and I put my API key in there so that I get all the points. Dude, that's, that's bullshit. I'm sorry. Crypto jacking is shit, man. Wiggle jacking is the thing. <laughs> so that's why Vegas is just a little bit more dense now. You're welcome. Yeah, so that goes back to knowing your equipment, knowing your technology, knowing what you're trying to do. Uh, as we said, you know, Rick and I are trying to get like the best fidelity, get every packet, get every bit, no corruptions. And you know, I test all the cards competitively with a tool called Kismet Shootout, which is part of the older version of Kismet because the new one just came out. And then, and then we test with 4,000 of you beating our shit up for the last 11 years. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the people attacking the network do help a little bit. Uh, sometimes they crash, not in my testing, but here. Uh, which is always fun for us. But yeah, um, knowing what you're looking for and then trying to build a test plan accordingly, all I did was I said to Dragorn, like, you know what would be great is if I could have like a packet count from every radio, and whichever one has the most packets, that one's at 100%, and then scale everything else accordingly. And I get these pretty little things that say like, oh, this guy found 100% of the packets, and this one found 93. And it gets a general relative idea of, you know, which cards see things and which cards don't. And yes, I do have matched antennas for everything, because don't we all have 43 of the same antenna? Um, as it turns out, if you buy a lot of alpha equipment, they all have the same antenna, which is really helpful. Yeah, you got to ring it out a little bit. You got to ring it out a little bit. All right, since you brought up antennas, do not buy like a 12 dBi monster antenna, plug it into an alpha card and complain, I can't see shit. Oh, can, I, can I talk about Especially I, I talk if about you antennas. wiggle. Okay, I got to talk about antennas. Um, oh. The See, everybody has a shit on them. Let, yeah. me, let me tell you. So each one of us probably has a gross yeah. of antennas. And I think we all know what they do. But see this little guy? This little 1 dB antenna, 2.4 gigahertz? Amazing for finding things when you get close. You know why? Because yeah. it's a fairly shitty antenna. You know what <laughs> shitty antennas do? They tell you what's close. This is Bluetooth. No, uh, uh, antennas are... That's a Wi-Fi antenna. Yeah, but... In 
important thing to note about antennas. Uh, people always want to say, uh, you know, I got to buy. Did an, he get an accent when he started drinking? I got to buy a corner reflector. I got to do this. I got to do that. Um, Best antenna are, ever made. Antennas are very much um, use case specific. So if I want to pick up somebody from a half mile away, I'm going to want a corner reflector or maybe this Yagi that was bought from, is that a Hack 5? Yeah. That, no, that is a simple Wi-Fi. But this is if just I, for war driving. That is an 18 yeah. dBi no, Yagi not. antenna, it's fully directional. For war driving. And everybody goes crazy about this. I want, to I get want a, a Yagi. Yagi. It's $25. It's $29.5. But... The problem with this one is that I'm picking up stuff from, like, a mile away. And you're picking it up at a three-degree angle, which means the guy in the back of the room with the glasses on, Uh, we're looking at his left eye only. If there's an AP on the guy to your left, not not seeing it. So when I'm scanning and I want to geolocate Wi-Fis, I don't want Yaggies because I'm pulling in stuff from hundreds of meters away. Do you guys know that when you're driving with a GPS, you guys, not you... You are picking up the signal where you are, not where the AP is. Yeah. So one of the big exactly. issues with Wiggle isn't that they're doing it wrong, because they're doing it absolutely You're right. You're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. When you're driving down the road with a 9 dBi yeah. ground plane roof-mounted antenna, you're picking right. up seven blocks in each direction. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, what I... Give me the, give me the mic. Has anybody give me the mic. who's ever driven on I-80 through Nevada... Raise your hand, seriously. Okay. I, I, as you go into each valley, you're picking up stuff from 2.7358 miles away, right? Okay, you don't want that shit. You don't want to pick up stuff from a long distance away. If you're trying to map stuff, you need to use very low... Can get water, please? Yeah. <laughs> the point is... <laughs> Depending on what you want, if I want to capture every packet from a source, yes, I want a Yagi to be able to pick up that for that source. source. Yes, for, for one, one source. source, I want to have a Yagi or a corner reflector or something like that to pick them up from a long distance away. But if I want to map things, you want to actually. I love my MacBook Air with Kismet because it picks up very slow, very short distance away. I was going to talk now. <laughs> Man, I've been wanting this for so long. You're so rude. And... Okay. Okay, listen. But now I, I have a counter argument. Counter argument. I want the mic, says the what guy with the I flashy box. What if I want to box? win all the points on Wiggle? <laughs> counter argument. Okay. Then you're an asshole. <laughs> We're all assholes. <laughs> Now, it goes back to the basics, right? Understand what an antenna does, how it works, what's a pattern, right? Because I, I, like, I get like emails saying, well, I want to use a Yagi to snoop this Wi-Fi that's across three buildings 200 yards down the street. I'm like, yeah, you're going to get good luck. It's like, and then it's like, well, how would you do it? It's like, I would move in underneath and, you know, I will get closer. I will get closer, right? Yeah, it matters greatly. Uh, one of the things we see all the time is people with like nine DBI antennas, and they're angled like this, and they're pointed towards us with the tip of the antenna. And the yeah, the plane is like a frigging pancake around the antenna, and you're pointing it at us, so you're literally looking at everything but us, right? Understanding what like a polar chart looks like. So these things are, they're showing signal out almost straight as you get higher gain. So omnidirectional literally means every direction, but only in one plane. So the higher the gain of the antenna, say the name, name, Frankie. So when you have a a device here like Frankie with a five DBI, it's a little bit more donut shaped than baseball. And when you start getting into a nine, you know, if Frankie had a little bit larger of an antenna, then it would be more like a pancake. Little Joe. <laughs> so Little Joe here has a two DBI antenna, which is actually about as close to as an ideal Omni as you're going to get. This is if you want to see above you, below you, next to you, and a nice high signal strength. 
when you're, say, war driving, a five, maybe on up to a seven or an eight is good because it pushes farther to the sides. And especially in a residential area, most things are going to be, you know, a floor, two floors, not very big. But if you start war driving downtown with even a five dB antenna, you're going to miss everything above like floor five or six. Um, now we're just reading Kolchek, the Night Stalker. This isn't an internal radio. It has a USB chip on it. So you could have an integral antenna like this, which is a completely unknown Chinesium antenna. It might be printed on the circuit board. It might be a bare length of wire. It could be a cute little spring that TSA thinks is part of a gun or something. And yeah, I, you wouldn't believe how often we get stuck at the airport. Um, thank you for all of those named devices. But yeah, knowing how these things work is very important. You're throwing all of his... Oh, Kolchek's gone forever. Little Joe has been donated. Who wants to adopt Little Joe? Uh, yeah, so a lot of times, um, if I go into a Starbucks and I want to see what everybody's doing, I don't want a long-distance antenna. I want a short-distance antenna. I don't want high gain. I want short gain. And so, like... Kismet, Hello, Render. Example, Do you know anything Mac, about war Mac driving? Air. Yeah. Uh, Kismet hey, runs hey Render, come on up. Player. There's an empty seat. Murdoch needs a place to sit. Shout out. Yeah. Everybody say hi to Render Man. Yeah. Big room. Hey, he doesn't need a lot of room. He doesn't no, no, he's little. He's really little. He's very skinny. And then... Yes. Yeah. There's yeah. sit. We need more yeah. alcohol. Yeah. Alcohol to the stage, please. So it's important to note what do I want to capture? What do I want to see? If I'm just sitting in a little. <laughs> Ten years ago, he'd be dead right now. Probably. Yes. Alcohol to the stage. Al this nope. shit show just. Hardbark may not a have any. Wi Fi royalty. <laughs> If Dakuna, Dakahuna was here, we'd have most of the church of Wi-Fi here. It's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the white dude doesn't get any. The white dude? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. So for those of you who don't know, an extra introduction. Render Man, founder of the church of Wi-Fi. Am I getting this right? Of the Pope. The, the Pope of the uh, Reformed Church of Wi-Fi. The Pope of the He's Reformed Church of Wi-Fi. the second iteration of. So if you Google and you have some decent skills, although he's tried to erase this from the internet, you can find him wearing a backpack frame just like this 15 years ago that did not have so many antennas, and the angle of his body is like this because the thing was so heavy and he's was. not... Yeah. Well, the, the backpack was heavy, and you're Oh, yeah. It was a free UPS so. battery on the damp yeah. thing. So. Yeah. So wa walking around doing the uh, war, uh, war, uh, fox hunting challenge, wasn't it, that you were wearing the amazing yeah. backpack for? Because back in the day, we used to, you know, have to use a real computer. And by the way, the reason we say stay out of the casinos during the fox hunt <laughs> is 100% render man's fault. <laughs> I was next to him when it happened. I laughed my ass off, and they said DEFCON will be shut down if he does this again. <laughs> this is a true story. I just wanted to win. <laughs> it wasn't me. I wanted to win. Yep, there you go. Okay. And that's why we have rules now, like stay out of the casino. All right, so since we're just inviting random people to take the stage because we like them, uh, who has questions in the audience to ask a panel of idiots? Don't ask about five gigahertz adapters. Is there a sore spot for you, Kentaro? Wait, what five gigahertz? I have a lot of five gigahertz adapters. Yeah, what's what's the story with the five gigahertz adapters? I can't inject on five gigahertz. Is it my fault or is it Cali? Oh, well, Cali is a generic hacking. OS. Pentu is just a really <laughs> fucked up specific one. <laughs> yeah, Pentu is shit, but Kali is shit too. So people ask me what I use. I don't use Kali that often because I don't need half of the crap that's on it. You know, um, I'd rather start with a plain um, install and, and work off of that. So, like, about that. 
that. Don't break it. What? Don't break that. Using the mic. Use the mic. Use the mic. Talk it in the mic. It works best when it's Honestly, close. Honestly, don't know what we're talking about anymore. Funny naked stories. What do you want to talk about? So tell us about Pentu. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think anybody came here to talk about Pentu. So Pentu is this amazing Linux distribution <laughs> that you should all install. It's got the new Kismet and apparently almost all the tools you need for the CTF because one of them got wiped off the CD. It's got the new PMKID attack and things like that. Okay, let's talk about some fun things. We've got a whole group of people on stage. Who here is terrified about the new PMKID attack from the Hashtag forums because we're all going to get owned immediately? I am. Okay. So one person doesn't know what they're doing. Two, three, four. Okay. So four people don't know what they're doing. The rest of you already understood that this is almost the exact same thing as we've been doing before. It is really cool. It is a new level of reliability that we may or may not have had before because now you only need to successfully capture one packet and hope that the one thing you need is in there and if it is you can very reliably crack the key. Well uh, and then the other thing too with it I mean you read the Hashcap forums and you learn about it and it's like you need a tool to do the attack. Well guess what it's not. It's it's protocol level stuff. Like that's leaked information. So like I was at Black Hat earlier this week and I was scanning and they have Ruckus Wireless there and they're like, we're so worried that we're leaking. And I'm like, well, I'm not seeing any because you don't have that in your packets. So I didn't try to actively try to get anything out of it. Of course not. But I was doing the passive listening and so I would be able to see it. So I was able to set up an AP and demonstrate one that does have it and use it as kind of a baseline against it. So you can see it in the environment completely passively. Hey, really noisy folks over there? We're the ones being noisy. Could you calm down just a tiny bit? Thank you. Thank you. I will do that thing with the uh, speaker again. I will. I will. Uh, so that's one thing about like knowing your tools because it's like it's a brand new vulnerability and I'm surprised somebody hasn't made a website and a, and a, and a branding and there isn't pictures of it a already. Logo. But yeah. and a logo, of course, because you got to do that. Uh, but the thing about it though is we already have tools that can identify vulnerable hosts. It's Kismet. I mean, you could start doing that. I mean, even TCP dump. Like, open up freaking TCP dump on a wireless monitor mode interface and you can start doing it today. So, um, you know, and again, it's just a matter of understanding protocols and then understanding the tools that you have. And I think the largest thing is, you, you know, build something, have something running that and start getting used to that, being in that environment. Right. So again, it is a cool new technique that may or may not be enabled on the access points. And if it is, it's leaking some valuable data that you get for free when a client connects because it's part of the first packet for the EAP exchange on a legitimate client. The cool thing, the part that's actually new, is that you can force it because the first packet comes from the access point to the client. You don't have to answer any kind of challenge. They're sending you what you need to crack the key. And that is legitimately new and that is legitimately cool, but you're still running a dictionary attack or a brute force or a mask attack or whatever. You're still cracking the bloody password. So a strong password is actually going to make this very resistant. And again, it's cool, but the sky isn't falling. Um, but if the sky were to be falling, there's this thing called WPA3, right? Who here knows what WPA3 is? Okay, so you all know that it's just like a bunch of standards that were not even standards. They were informational RFCs that have been randomly implemented for the last couple of years. And then they're just kind of, okay, now this is WPA3, these four standards. Um, so yeah, different people wrote up a couple of cool RFCs uh, for Simultaneous authentication of equals, uh, opportunistic wireless encryption. I think both of those were Dan Harkins. Uh, and they were informational RFCs, which aren't even like standards. And then the people just kind of started implementing them. Host APD implemented it, WPA supplicant imp implemented it. And these were specifically to get around some of the weaknesses of WPA and WPA2, where you can offline dictionary attack or you know, the weakness of open networks where there's no good way to provide network access to a whole bunch of people and you know, not tell everyone the password. So things like opportunistic wireless encryption are actually really cool because it's a way to create a secure connection without sharing a key with anybody. What does the fox say? Hey, wasabi! Wasabi, what does the fox say? Wasabi! Hey, cool, there's a fox. Hi, fox! Hey, 
Yeah, it's the fox. Oh my god. It's an oh my god, the fox is. Oh, it's an Akita. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were a doggy. I didn't mean to be rude. Come back up here. Can we? Is there a sign that says no petting? Yes. No heavy petting, but I mean. No heavy petting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. The WPA3 stuff is actually kind of interesting. The whole reason the PMKID bug was found is because they were going through trying to find a bug in WPA3. That one wasn't it, mind you. That was just a bug in WPA and WPA2. But they were looking for attacks on WPA3. So people are starting to look at this stuff now. People that are good at crypto, people that aren't up here and drunk. And that's a great thing, right? But it's a very interesting standard because it takes most of the fun stuff off the table. The most important thing that it almost takes off the table is management frame protection. Uh, 802.11w, which is encrypted and or signed de-authenticate frames. So cool things like Kentaro's necklace would theoretically be useful if the WPA3 standard You're good, required 802.11w. <laughs> Fortunately for Kentaro though, I think it requires it to be optionally supported which means like nobody's going to freaking implement it still and then we're just going to DOS everything and well Black Friday at Best Buy is still going to be funny. How many things support 802.11w? How many things support 802.11w? Well after making an exhaustive search of every device I own which is 200-ish Wi-Fi cards about 15 or so different drivers. So uh, it's basically bullshit. Yeah the ones that presently work in Linux apparently can be counted on zero hands. Um, yeah, it's there. No, it's totally supported by nothing. Um, yeah. But Zira, that brings up another thing. It's like people are like, well, why are you only doing 2.4 gigahertz? It's like, because that's where all the cheap smash and grab vendors are. You yep. bring out this, like, you know, dash cam or home security cam. All they care is, like, dump a product into a market, get the fuck out with the money, right? So 2.4 chips are cheap, so they'll put it on and then launch it and be gone. And customers stuck with a device that gets, doesn't get updated. So, you know. I mean, understanding what your targets are, and again, let's, let's take out the fact that this is DEF CON and let's talk about actual Wi-Fi security because it's hard. Wi-Fi is never implemented properly. If you're doing enough data collection, you can pick up the data that matters and you can start to exploit that. Now, again, we're on camera, so from a security perspective, we want to make sure that, wow, here comes Wasabi with a friend. Hi, friend. And Akita. Hi, Akita. All right. Yes. Wait, it's a wireless Akita. Wasn't moving? Yes. Oh, yeah, that, that was live. You just saw that. You're not hallucinating. You saw that. Wow. Um, Security is really, really important with this stuff. War driving, pulling data, building teddy bears with Wi-Fi cameras in them. Hi. Um, all of this stuff is really important because it gives us the ability to really interrogate the data that's going on and to tell people what's important about what we're doing. Go ahead. Go ahead, Murdoch. No, I just wanted me to bring up dongs. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's more Bluetooth, though, so. Oh, no, no, please. You can talk about your project. We love, we love the IOD. Tell us about your new Kismet plugin. What was it called? Yeah, so my, my new project that I've been working on for the last two years, basically, uh, is the Internet of Dongs. So I'm also yeah, the Dawn of Dongs. Yeah. yeah. What? Yeah, shut up. Uh, yeah, so there are Internet-connected sex toys out there. I have a very large suitcase full of them. Uh, and, yeah, you can actually go war driving for these uh, uh, Bluetooth devices. Uh, I believe, with Russ's assistance, there will be a contest in that shortly, actually. We'll actually find out in situ, can you actually do this in a crowd? So here's the deal. Those of you that are playing the WCTF, this is the part you want to listen to. Hi, guys. Wave. Hi. Yeah, seriously. So Renderman has asked us to, in the good spirit of war driving, because war driving is not just Wi-Fi anymore. War driving is Bluetooth. It's Zigbee. It's basically any signals that you can pick up while you're driving. We've now incorporated software-defined radios, SDRs, into war driving. We've incorporated the Freak Labs 2.4 and 900 megahertz uh, Zigbee drivers. We've incorporated Bluetooth 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. That being said, Render, once he gives us the MAC addresses with some of the tools that we have, we are going to have an IOD Fox. 
This would be a fox tail. That would be an IOD fox tail. And you can all imagine what an IOD fox tail might be. It can be interrogated with the tools that we have and potentially manipulated with the tools we have. I, I don't know what the rules of engagement are I, I, I for penetration Ro- testing I, 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 IOD I to to that, devices. But, yeah, we will so some, please elaborate, uh, Render. Um, need to talk to Russ about it. We're going to set some, you know. Oh, you? Okay. Okay. You can do it right now. <laughs> well, give me a minute. You know, I need to lube up. <laughs> but, yeah, so there, there, there will be somebody with a uh, Bluetooth-enabled uh, vibrating butt plug wandering around a defined space that we need to set up. Um, your objective will be to identify this person and set it off. One of which might make the other one easier. I think if you constantly set it off, you'll find that person pretty quickly. <laughs> I don't know. It depends if you catch them by surprise or you know, how it goes. But, uh, yeah. He's over there! Are you a fox? <laughs> well, I mean, this is a whole new, you know, what does a fox say? Ah! Seven! More. Pineapple! 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 Give me the Wi-Fi. How the hell did I get associated with you guys? I think you baptized half of us. Oh, yeah. Bye, Wiggle. Bye, Wiggle. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Wiggle. Thank you, Wiggle. Wiggle it just a little bit. Where are you clapped to? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, actually, that that issue has come up because there are, there is actually at least one uh, Wi-Fi enabled vibrator that's also an endoscopic camera. <laughs> Internet of Dawn.gs is the website. Uh, Pentest Partners did a report on it. I took exception to a few of the, uh, uh, their findings and uh, uh, you know, corrected them. Uh, but basically it was that the thing became an access point itself. You connected your phone to it, streamed the, the video off of it to your phone. It never touched on a, a real wireless network. But... Because this was, you know, Chinese chop shop stuff, it was basically the web, uh, uh, streaming webcam off of a drone repackaged. You could get root on this thing. It's running BusyBox and throw it into client mode and connect it to a network. Holy shit. So uh, it also has a web server on it. So it literally is the internet on a dong. So we call this war driving. I'm not sure what we call worse sexing, but I think it may become a thing. Uh, rule 34? Like, I, I don't know. But the, the, uh, the whole idea is that this stuff exists. A lot of the security on it sucks, so I'm, I'm doing what I can to, to fix this. Um, there are people that do enjoy wearing these things out in public, and you know, there's some debate about the, the effective range of them. I contend that it's going to be so short that, you know, if it does suddenly go off, you're going to know who did it because they're going to be laughing really hard and you can just go over and punch them. And also the kind of people who typically uh, like wearing these devices will also be at events that are generally populated with people who are very well equipped and well versed in beating the living crap out of each other and would enjoy beating the crap out of you if you pull any crap. So just saying, you know, but uh, yes, on... uh, uh, Internet of Dong's GitHub, uh, there's a, a couple of projects I'm working on. One is the a Kismet plugin, the IOD screwdriver, because Pentest Partners came up with the term uh, screwdriving, looking for, for wireless sex toys. I wrote a plugin that basically takes the, uh, uh, you know, does regex for the, the default names on these devices, and uh, yeah, highlights them in, within Kismet, so you know exactly what you found a Dong. So Kismet can now find Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, and vibrators. Thank you, Dragorn. Thanks, Dragorn. I mean, talk about a really open platform you know, you could build off of. Like, it's great. He really fulfills all our needs, free internet and sex toys. I mean, the guy well, is amazing. free internet on a sex toy? <laughs> free internet on a sex toy, excellent. <laughs> and you can stream it. 
All right, we actually do have another speaker coming in, so we can't do this all day. So I'm going to moderate slightly. We have 15 minutes. We're going to talk about something fun, amateur radio. Not only do we pick up all of these signals, but uh, you wouldn't believe what the police say when they pull over a car with this thing mounted on top. First they say, sir, that's unsafe. <laughs> then they say, what the hell are you doing? And as it turns out, I have seen this done. Uh, we're doing a radiological survey of the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz spectrums, officer. Does not work. Uh, they don't like that. Um, but you know what really works great? I'm an amateur radio operator, and they say, huh, your, your gray beard isn't long enough, but okay. I shaved and, this morning. Yeah, and then they leave you alone. Um, being an amateur radio operator, especially in the U.S., has some magic perks for war drivers. Um, you are driving around with stuff like able to pick up police frequencies or maybe modified to public safety bands in the 4.9 gigahertz because who isn't war driving those sweet cameras they have everywhere, right? Didn't someone give a talk about modifying Colonel to have 4.9 on 5 gigahertz radios? No, he got it down to 4.8, and that was oh. a few years ago. Uh, <laughs> And definitely not like from 2192 to 2732. Um, yeah, wide band, wide band. I mean, before software defined radio was cool, retuning Wi Fi yeah, so was fun. I think, like, if, you, if, you, if I start thinking about it, before I started war driving, like, data pack of war driving in high school, which will be 30 years, so I'm pretty much statue of limitation. Be out. I used to have a, I have a wide band scanner with like a big ass disc on antenna, and I live in Tokyo. 30 years ago, only gangsters and celebrities had car phones. So I just had to sit there at night listening into conversations. And I might or might not have caused a couple celebrity divorces by selling the recordings I taped off the waves. <laughs> Wasabi I probably shouldn't to the say stage. that on video. But. Wasabi to the stage. Wasabi! To the stage. No pictures without approval, dude. Thank Welcome you. to DEFCON. Hey, Welcome to DEFCON. Thanks for coming. Read the cock. Explain cock. DEFCON has a code of conduct that is explained in the rule book and on literally every sign you walk by in the hallway. So while it looks like we are a bunch of dicks, and we are, yeah. um, people here don't like their picture taken. If they're on stage, it's fine, but like the contestants really hate it. So, just so that all of you know while we've got this. Um, yeah, so anyway, ham radio is a lot of fun. Uh, there's a whole lot of people that are uh, my grandfather's age who love ham radio. And then there's a whole lot of people um, my age who like ham radio. There's not a lot in between. And the hacker community is slowly kind of bringing this back by getting people tested at these events and walking around with walkie-talkies. I can't count the number of tweets I saw from various villages saying, getting ready for DEF CON, here's my kit. And they had like cheap little $30 walkie-talkies as part of their, yeah, barfings uh, or pukings or whatever the latest ch Chinese crap is. Um, so who in, the, who in the room's a ham? Who in the room has an FCC ID? Okay, that was a much smaller group of people. That being said, go take the test. Please go take the test. Be legal. Do it right. Because we're sniffing all your shit. We are listening to everything you say unless you're on DMR encrypted or P25. And or, he's going to tell your mom. I, I know your mom. Oh, I know your mom. That's different. Anyway. Hold on. Give me that. Nope. Don't, do not give that to our mom. Do not. No. No. Here, no, I, look. He's cut off. Go ahead, give, is, go ahead, give it to him. Really he has a wireless mic now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, let Aardvark talk. You, you got to plug it back in. Yeah, you put the one end into the other end. <laughs> hey, there's seats up front. I'm just saying you don't have to wait in the back. All right. <laughs> all right. Hey, all right. So, for those of you who don't believe the Church of Wi Fi is actually a religion, I do. Chandra, right there. Stand up. Hey. I, perf I performed his wedding Woo! as the Pope of the Church of Wi Fi. Yay. So, yes. Yep, 2013. Yep, so you can write it off on your taxes now. Donations yep. to Render Man. Still married. Yep. So uh, I'm just waiting because considering the way I've seen some of you drink, I might be doing Not a bad. funeral this weekend too. So 
you know, two drink minimum there. But I just wanted to say, like, congratulations, brother. Happy birthday. And, uh, yeah. So, all right. He's talking. You've, you've been cut off. This one's been cut off. Okay. Key off from the mic. So, again, amateur radio is fun. Um, there's been a thing at DEF CON for quite a number of years. They're across the hallway, and they call it the, uh, what, what is it, the Wall of Sheep? Wall of Sheep. The Wall of Sheep, which used to be a projector that gave you the username, password, and the website they were logging into, and it was all up on the screen. And now they, like, put a bunch of stars there, and, like, we know your password, but they're not going to tell anybody, which makes it way less fun. Um, why isn't there a radio wall of sheep yet? Why Back isn't in somebody... the old days, we had passwords on the screen. Yeah, I promise. Why, why isn't anybody recording all of this and playing it back? The Can goons I... have encrypted B25 radios, but did you know there's a little switch on the top that turns them to unencrypted? And did you know that the symbol for being encrypted is a universal no sign? So, like, it's a little confusing, or, or sometimes you just kind of get one on your way by in the hallway. A couple of these guys are walking around unencrypted, and it's funny. So um, just a quick shout-out. There's a conference in Romania called DEF CAMP. They actually do the Wi-Fi, uh, essentially a Wi-Fi wall sheet. They call it the Pwn Board. And, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. So I was able to integrate with them, and uh, I was accessing their API and, like, dumping live stats of what's going on, like crazy SSIDs. Uh, I was able to dump, uh, you know, if people were doing attacks, like, de-authentication attacks and that type of stuff in real time. And, I mean, these guys are talking about a different level of, like, devices and data radios, which I'm not capturing, but that's the, that's the level I want to get to. I want to be Next that information. Next year, there will be an SDR have, like, pineapple huge, boy. Yeah, that would be sick. So... We can make that I happen. I accept sponsorships. So next year... We'll dance for money. At DEF CON, and if anybody's East Coast, most of the East Coast B-sides will have a software-defined radio wall of sheep. He just Good caught catch, that. Dude, he stand up. He literally just caught You that. are not a hacker. Well, you I are need, athletic. I need to have everyone clap for that man right now. He just caught a sticker. That was epic. You, sir, are the true ninja among us. But... It is coming. It attempted to happen at DerbyCon, and there were some minor issues. I got banned from Twitter. Rick got banned from Twitter. But there will be a radio wall of sheep. What that means is all of your barfings, which are awesome, and all of your yesus, which are awesome. Super awesome. Will soon be publicized up on screen. Sorry. Go DMR. Go P25, go Moto Turbo, or go home. Yesu is uh, so I, awesome. I would like so to point expensive. out you're not actually allowed to encrypt the radios unless you're one yeah. of those four peoples that thinks you're allowed to encrypt the radios, and you have to make that with God and your lawyer, not with us. Uh, the FCC kind of says you're not allowed to encrypt, but they don't use those words, and it's weird. Um, but more importantly, if anybody can help me with speech to text for my Twitter engine, that would be great. I had a great Please. thing going back and forth uh, with every radio communication at DerbyCon. Things like, you know, Dave Kennedy addressed his team for 23 seconds. Um, Snus rudely cut Dave off for 12 seconds and things like that. But I couldn't actually get the text, uh, the, the words. So if anyone can help me with speech to text, uh, that'd be great. By the way, free Jericho. Free wait, 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 wait. We have an update. We have an official update. No, no, we're saying don't pay for Jericho. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we know he's free. Free Jericho. Yeah. Yeah, tweet at him say, I. Yeah, everyone, so there's this Twitter address at Jericho, right? Attrition. Why did I say Jericho? on attrition.org. Yeah. Hey, Bonlin, how much more time do we have to waste for you? Do you want to come up and start getting set up? Five more minutes? Okay. This show is going to last five more minutes because Bonland is the one who actually has talent, and he's going to be talking then. Hi, Bonland. So we'll maybe, just, maybe we could take a couple questions. Does anyone have any questions out he's there? He's one-handed. He's questions, 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 questions. 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 How much money have you guys wasted so far? Lots. Oh, my God, lots. It's a labor of love. I actually got a chat from Rick and then a phone call that said, hey, I just spent $500 on Amazon on wireless radios. Do you want to get them too? Hey, hey, have you guys heard of this thing called AliExpress? 
You got to get oh close. This one doesn't God. have a lot of Dude, lines. seriously, oh, like so I so if if you get on the Kismet and on AliExpress last if, month. If you get on the Kismet Discord, it gets even worse cuz somebody will post, "Hey, check out, I found this." And the next minute like everybody's like, "Oh shit, I just pushed by now." Oh shit, it's sold out on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, it's sold out now. on Amazon now. <laughs> I so. bought when we built our house, I put a 20 by 20 shed underneath of my deck. It's all totes of all the shit that doesn't work. Yeah. Oh, one other note on AliExpress. The awesome thing about it is that you can type in the chipset and find crazy stuff. So like RTL 8812, 8821, uh, uh, and some other fun ones. Exactly. What the, and you can Michael get say. like four dollar dongles. No, I was like, I'll go to Wikidev, look up the chips that I want, go back to AliExpress, punch <laughs> it in, and then order like twenty of them. You know. But they're next. But aren't they next door? <laughs> All right, here's the, here's the key to AliExpress ordering, though. Order twice you need because you have to have of what the ship is only working. And getting another half working is really going to take... Like, I ordered, like, 10 adapters. 10 showed up. Five of them worked. So I went, like, okay, I'm going to buy 13 more. I buy 13 more. Sure enough, half of them worked. But the, the second lot of 13 took, like, five months to arrive. It's like, so order way more than you need. By Always. the way, that's the closest I've been to El Cantaro's left hand. That's a lot of fucking rings. Uh, Ring life! Hey, any other question? I think we have time for one more question. Yeah, he's, you. He's giving Jason Street a run for his money. Uh, are we he asked, are we going to be a deaf camp? I submitted a paper, so if you know someone on the CFP board, hook it up. I, I know uh, it's, that... It's a conference in Romania. Nope. Yeah, we're we're on a really not gonna awesome make it. conference. It's like a really great Western European country. Do not give the mic to Aardvark. You have been dealing. <laughs> this is what he's like after one beer. He's such a lightweight. <laughs> all right, all right, we got three minutes left. Give it to Aardvark. This is gonna be funny. What? <laughs> it's gonna be funny. You could have done a great question, and instead we're giving it no, to this guy. The apartment so thing. I have, I have these things that are Katie. Cool. I was important thing uh, with the wireless scanning. Um, it's important to say. Um, <laughs> you want to drink all of this bottles? I no one, did. no <laughs> one else drank these bottles except for me. Give it no, to stop Render. it. Please give mine to Render. No, but in Def Camp, uh, Dark Render went to Def Camp. Um, important thing about that. Here, you have that. <laughs> one time at Def Camp. It's one of those, you, there's no way that this ends well. You know, just. <laughs> no, I think once we started I, it, I, know, I just wanted bringing to say, people on stage, it's just not going to end well. I, I just wanted to say to all you guys, all the organizers, all the staff here and everything, because uh, I started this thing back in the day. Yep. Yep. And I suck at organizing. Super. So, so these guys stepped up and it, like, to see everybody in here like this is awesome. Uh, you guys blew away all my expectations of anything I could have ever thought to accomplish. Um, the fact that you've now got this thing down to like, you know, a Pelican Case Road Show, you know, is amazing. Uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're keeping the whole thing going, keeping it alive. And this is still, I mean, there hasn't been a lot going on 80211 lately, but it's still really important stuff that gets forgotten, and this is what gets you, you know, uh, compromised. So it matters. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Fuck you too. Fuck you very much. Raise your antenna to the sky.